Hello everyone. I wanted to do a quick little breakdown on the current version of ChatGPT and the current version of Google Gemini to see how both these applications have improved the last couple of months or the last year or two since they've been really, really popular. Now, the biggest thing I can definitely tell you is that between both, it definitely just depends on which one you like. You know, if you like Gemini, if you like ChatGPT more, GPT is probably like ChatGPT is probably more popular. But I'll run a couple of tests today to see how they kind of compare. When the applications really, when you kind of look at them side by side, they both look very, very similar. To be honest, I do like the colors that are associated with Google Gemini. I feel like this type of application UI wise looks a little nicer, but functionality wise, maybe ChatGPT might be better. Now, Gemini comes stock built in inside of Android phones nowadays. ChatGPT does not come stock built in, although within iPhones, there is an integration between Apple Intelligence and ChatGPT that you can toggle on but Google Gemini is basically like Google Assistant, you know, improved. So that's why this thing is a little bit, probably a little bit more in tune with Android phones. Now they both function very much the same. So you can see right here, we have both of our, you know, applications and both of our prompts. You can see right here, when it kind of comes down to both, I will definitely tell you when I kind of see it, both of them do look pretty good for the most part. You have your chat box at the very top, so you can go through and see these types of you know, prompts that basically come up here. You have example prompts that you can do right here. Hopping out of here, I wanna go ahead and show you at the very top, right? You have your account panel here inside of ChatGPT. That prompt panel is at the bottom right here. If we hop out of here, you can also see that you have the ability of you know, upgrading your version of ChatGPT or Google Gemini by tapping onto this particular panel here and you can choose between different you know, Gemini accounts or ChatGPT Plus accounts. As you can see, you have your Gemini Advanced option down there if you wanna go ahead and actually upgrade to Gemini Advanced. Then at the very bottom, you have some examples of some you know, prompts that you can actually type in. So you can go through and you can create really whatever you want to. So you can ask it to summarize a long document, you can make a recommendation, and then you also have those chat boxes right here. They both also give you these plus buttons down here at the bottom as well. So you can click on the plus button on both and you will have the ability of bringing in all sorts of files. Now, the cool thing about Google Gemini is that it does kind of connect straight into Google Drive. So not only can you get into camera and gallery and files, but you can also connect right into Google Drive if you wanna go ahead and basically plug into like your, your, your cloud environment. With, I, with your iPhone, it's a little bit different although you can go ahead and click onto files. And if you do have some sort of like, you know, if you have like, you know, Google Drive set up for your, you know, iCloud account or for your iPhone, you can still access your Google Drive files here, but you'll have to turn it on, set it up and all that stuff. So you still kind of get that here, but I do like how it's a little bit more embedded inside of, you know, Google Gemini because it is a Google product. Now hopping out of here, you still have the capability of getting like you know, deep research if you want to get more in-depth answers. You also have Think down here too, which is more or less the same thing. And that is essentially the layout. Now they both give you voice dictation and being able to ask it like voice prompts. So for the first prompt, we're just gonna go ahead and kind of give it for pretty basic stuff here. So number one, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna ask it for the largest country in the world. That's pretty much gonna be the basic thing to do. So I'm gonna tap into here. I'm gonna go and click into their voice icons right here. What is the largest country in the world? Now, the cool thing about this one was that it allowed it to just kind of go through and just allowed me to kind of you know record it. I think I may have clicked on the wrong one here, the largest country but you can see this one's already talking to. Is Russia. Now, if I want to do a follow-up response, let's just say I want to do something basic like, you know, how many people live there? How many people live in that country? So now we can go and do this and we can kind of have more conversational type of experience. You can see this one was a lot faster to respond back. Google Gemini is definitely taking its time here. It's a little bit slower. Don't know why it took this long on this particular you know, phone. I don't know if there's a specific thing. This is also a Galaxy S25 and an iPhone 16. These are some of the most you know, powerful phones you can buy right now. So that was in and of itself kind of interesting, but you could compare the answers here and you can see that the Galaxy, basically Google Gemini, was giving you a longer answer, more in depth, where the ChatGPT application gave you a much quicker response. I didn't really tailor either one of these to kind of change their answers. I didn't, you know, I don't really have any pre-built settings in here. So whatever kind of you would expect here is kind of what would end up happening for the most part. Now, another thing I want to do is kind of generating some images. 
So I want to generate an image of a cat and I'm going to ask it for both. So I'm going to say, generate an image of a cat. So there we go. I can go and ask it that question and let's go and see which one is going to be the faster one here. Now you can see this time around ChatGPT did take a little bit of time for it to understand that prompt. And you can see that this one kind of messed up a little bit because it looked like I copied the previous one and then I did something else. So I'm going to go and stop it. It did still kind of generate some images of some cats, which was kind of interesting. So that right there was actually really cool. Now, even though this one messed up a little bit, it still generated the images of the cats that I wanted. So you can see ChatGPT did end up giving me two different cat responses. I can tap on them. I can view them. Google Gemini only gave me one. ChatGPT does take a long time to load some of these things up sometimes, which can be very, very interesting. Don't know why it does that. I feel like it should be kind of, you know, pretty much like not taking as long for this first photo to take some time. So let's go and do another basic one. Let's say I'm going to New York City and I want, you know, an itinerary of things to do, right? So let's go and kind of list those things out. I'm going to New York City and I want some fun things to do. Can you give me a list of fun things to do there? Now, this one kind of did go through kind of prematurely, I'm going to be honest. The chat GPT, I wish it would just know that I'm done talking and it would kind of go on from there. That's what I like about Gemini, but Gemini does go through and it does cut you off pretty fast. So that is something that's kind of interesting. Now you can kind of see exactly what's going on here as well. So it does kind of give you similar types of layout. Now I do like ChatGPT a little bit more here because it allows like things are just bolded and it looks a little bit nicer and more concise inside of ChatGPT. You can see inside of Google Gemini, it does kind of go through, it gives you fairly similar types of information. Like there's this thing to do, there's this thing to do, like, you know, just kind of gives you the basic type of experience there. But I do like ChatGPT because it bolds everything for me, right? It bolds things for me and then it kind of does all those things for me automatically and it makes it look a little bit nicer inside of ChatGPT, I feel like, than inside of Google Gemini. I'm going to do one more. Maybe I misspoke. Maybe I'm not going to New York City. Maybe, maybe I'm going to Las Vegas, right? So let me go and try that. I meant Las Vegas. I'm going to Las Vegas. I'm not going to New York City. So let's go and try this one. Let's go and send this one out and let's see what it kind of does. So you can see ChatGPT much faster at responding back. It's pretty quick. Gemini this time around does, you know, go through. It says, oops, my apology. You can see they kind of do the same thing. They kind of apologize or they kind of say, okay, we're good. The information here really just depends on up to you, whether you like the information or not. The big thing though for me is formatting. The timeliness of the response and the formatting. Gemini was quicker to generate those images and it seemed less laggier to kind of generate those images. But you can see ChatGPT was kind of giving you a more concise, it just looks better. The formatting on ChatGPT looks better. There might be some settings I can go and modify with in Gemini, but from stock settings for me not doing anything, this is essentially the type of layout that you're going to be getting. I also feel like Gemini, just by default, gives you much longer responses. I mean, just look at this one, right? ChatGPT, like if we just kind of scroll through these, you can see there's like a much more thorough response, I would say, inside of Google Gemini. I don't even know what just happened. Inside of Google Gemini, as you can see, then inside of ChatGPT, it's about 50% more information you're going to be getting inside of Gemini. Now you can ask these things to concise it down and kind of narrow it down from there. But I would probably say when it comes down to both, I think both these are pretty good. I think Google Gemini is, I feel like it has more potential. I just wish it, the formatting was better. And I wish, you know, it was a little bit better here and there, but I really like the conversational type of aspect to it. I like when you speak to it, it just automatically sends. Whereas on the iPhone version, or at least on ChatGPT, you know, the application, it doesn't really do that. You still have to click the send button, but there's probably ways to toggle those things on and off and kind of modify those things from there. So that basically kind of covers it up here for the most part. If you have any other thoughts or questions, please let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button, that me so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out, so then.